Hi and welcome to Commoner's Craft. This is the second video of a three-part series where I'm making a castle from almost 100% cardboard. If you didn't watch the first video, make sure to check it out before watching this one. Without further ado, let's make castle towers. I'm using cardboard again for the base of the towers and this time I'm using one big piece with lines scored in the cardboard to make it bend on the right place. Doing it like this makes assembly easier, but you can perfectly use four separate parts as well. To make the construction sturdier, I wanted to add a skeleton in the middle of the tower, and the top piece also functions as the roof where minis can stand. I just glued some scrap cardboard so I have a backing for the cardboard to stick to. And once that's all done, you can glue everything in place. I used some paper tape again to make assembly easier. adding extra layers of cardboard to make it appear like the walls are thicker than they are. On the outside of the tower I wanted to add an archway just like on the walls, so it looks like they belong together. Some shorter parts were added to one side, and then longer parts to overlap the shorter ones to create a square. These are the shorter ones. And this is how it looks with the long ones in place. While building the towers I wanted to try something different than the walls for the tops of the battlements, so I used some expanded polystyrene for this. It's a type of foam you can find in packaging, so it's a free trash material. I suggest using a long and sharp blade to cut this or else it will crack and break and that's not the look I'm going for. I stuck them on with hot glue and I cut them bigger than they need to be so I can trim them later. Now it looks like this, and I trimmed them first by cutting them to size and then cutting small parts out to make it look like individual bricks. Again, use a sharp knife for this or else it will start to crumble. They should look like you can see here. Now I start a long and sometimes tedious process of covering the entire building cardstock bricks of different sizes, but it's definitely worth it in the end. First I start by covering the sides of the top of the tower, then the corrugation on the top of the battlements, the corners of the wall as well, just make sure to fold the bricks before adding them or else the cardboard will not stay in place while gluing. Using hot glue will solve this, but I really prefer working with PVA glue over hot glue myself. In between the stonework I started work on the doors and hatches. I wanted this so miniatures would have some way of moving up and down the walls and the towers. I cut cardstock to size and glued coffee stir sticks to the cardboard. Once these are done, leave them to dry for finishing later. 
Here I'm adding strips of cardstock to function as windows. I only add them to three walls. The fourth is going to have a door for moving up and down from the castle walls. When the wood is dry, you can cut the excess off with a sharp knife. I suggest scoring some lines in the sticks to help sell the wood look. This will help when adding washes and dry brushing. Just like this. To get the right height for adding the doors, I used one of the walls I made in the previous episode. The other wall was glued on the bottom. And the hatch was glued in the middle of a 9 piece grid, like before to calculate moving distance in D&D quicker. To add more detail, I used part of a keychain as door handles, some cardstock as hinges and a backing for the handle, and some strips as metal trimming for the hatch. All the cardstock parts were added by just using a little bit of PVA glue. To make the keychains more flat, I used a ruler to press them down and then add them by gluing them on with super glue. In the end, it should look like this. Now some more stonework. Here I'm covering the corrugation on the bottom of the battlements. And I'm also gluing cardstock strips around the doors to give it a more recessed look. I add smaller bricks around the arches, just like on the walls. From now on, all the bricks I'm laying are the standard sized 3 by one and a half cm ones. So on the side of the battlements, on the top, in the inside of the side of the battlements, and the sides of all the walls. On this wall I didn't bother adding bricks below the door because I'm always going to put a wall next to it so you're never gonna see it anyway. Saves more time for other things like playing some more Baldur's Gate 3. Before base coating I add a combination of glue and black paint to the foam to make it stronger. It really needs this otherwise it's going to crumble when dry brushing. Painting the stonework is identical to the first video, so I'm going to go over this quickly so you don't get bored from hearing the same over and over again. So base coating with two layers of cheap black acrylic paint first, then a dry brush of a medium grey. Use a smaller brush for the insides of the doors and windows. A lighter and smaller dry brush of a light grey. Dry brushing some darker green in all the corners and edges to look like moss and a brown wash to add some streaks of dirt and rain below the battlements or the windows. And these are the new steps. The doors and the hatches were painted in a darker brown color. Just one coat of a miniature paint should be fine. While that's all drying, I added a coat of black paint to the insides of the windows. Before painting the metal parts, I'm going to dry brush all the wood with a base color. The reason I do this is because it's impossible not to reach the metal parts and it's just easier this way. All the metal parts of the doors and the hatches were then painted with a gunmetal color. The one I used is a lead belcher from Games Workshop. The wood was then washed with a brown wash. I used mid-brown from RB Painter. And all the metal parts were washed with a black wash. 
I used Nuln Oil from Games Workshop. The metal was then dry brushed with a silver color, lighter than the previous one after washing. And again I cleaned up this part with some black paint, it just looks better. And now the towers are all done. As you can see, they are perfectly modular and fit nicely next to the walls I made previously. This will also make it a lot easier to store these pieces of terrain. The only thing missing now is a gatehouse, so tune in next week to see me make one from trash material as well and with a functional moving gate. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, subscribe to see more build videos. Take care.